laid down his life for someone like me. All right. But I'll tell you one thing, I'm right. so no glad oh, that he did. Right. I'm so no glad yes. that he did. Yes. Amen. Amen. We serve a good God. A righteous God. Yes, and I tell you, he loves us yes. more than we love ourselves. Amen. And I'm glad about it. Amen. I certainly give him all honor, glory, and praise this morning. For him to even allow me to, first of all, to enter into his house. But as I do so, I do so with thanksgiving. And as he allowed me to enter his course, I do so with praise. And I am thankful. And I certainly bless his name. But we thank God for our being here. We certainly honor him today. We count it an honor and a privilege to be able to stand behind the sacred desk one more time to proclaim his gospel and his good news. And we certainly give honor to a shepherd of this great household of faith, Pastor Harris. Amen. We do give honor to the first man, Reverend Harris. And I do thank God for my lovely wife, Reverend Jackson. And Pastor Scott, we thank God for you. Uh, deacons who are not here today and we certainly thank our visitors that are here and we just thank God for all of his children that are in the house today and there is a word from the Lord amen the scripture that you've already heard was in your hearing comes from the book of John chapter 10 I'll be lifting up verses 1 through 5 if you are able to stand as we proclaim the word of God in reading we ask that you do so at this time John chapter 10, verse 1 through 5. When the people got to have it, they would say, Amen. 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 The word of God reads, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entered him by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he put it forth his own sheep, he go up before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. The verse that I would like to preach from today is verse 3, where it says to him, the porter opened, and the sheep hear his voice, and he called his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And the uh, subject I like to know uh, use today as a scripture as a text today will be he knows my name he knows my name lord we thank you right now for the opportunity we thank you for the calling and lord i pray right now that i decrease let me no longer be seen but the holy spirit hide me in the shadow of your mighty cross let me decrease that the word may come forth as an increase use me in whatever way you would like to use me on the day let me say nothing of myself but only that which you would have me say and Lord, we thank you right now for what you're about to do. And as I speak to your people, I have my ears open as well yes, yes, as you Lord. speak to me. Yes, so we Lord. thank you now for this word. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of God. He knows my name. Amen. Amen. And that's a good proclamation for all of us to know that the Lord knows who we are. Yes. He knows all about us. And he even knows us by name. Uh -huh. As I was preparing this, and uh, the Lord, you know, how every now and then there will be a song that you will hear. And we know that if you look in the Old Testament, the book of Psalms, we know there is a lot of songs that are there. And we know that some have gone on to put some of those scriptures into music. Yes. And we know that those songs were sung in the days of old. Um, that's where we get some of our hymns from, from the songs. So we know that there are some songs today that are so related to some of those songs that you can even preach from a song Amen. today. Amen. You can't preach from every song that you hear. Amen. But there are some songs that hit you in your heart. And it is these songs give the true word of God. And there is one song that I, have, I love to hear. And the name of the song is He Knows My Name. Uh, and we know that uh, Tasha Cobbs, Leonard, sings that song. And when she sings it, the Spirit of God yes, falls right. afresh yes, on her. Yes. And the Spirit of God falls on her background singers. Yes, and, you know, it just and it just Amen. embraces Amen. the Spirit of God as it enters in. Amen. And, you know, we should be able to worship the Lord through yes. song. Uh, we should be able to worship the Lord through praise as yes. well. Yes. But this is a song that touches my heart. So what I would like to do today, if, if the Lord would uh, have me do it, 
Just kind of preach from that song Amen. today that song because that song has so many powerful yes, verses in it. Yes. And uh, it, it, all of those verses relate to the scripture. Yes. So I would like to go through them today. And I would just say, Lord, have your way. Yes. Uh, this song reminds me of those songs that you used to hear in the Old Testament. Uh, and it will fit into that category today. So we can uh, say that she is somewhat of a psalmist. Because she is talking about her trials, some of the trials that we go through, and some of the things that we experience, and she has put them in words. And then she went on to put them in song. Uh, the text that I read already reminds us of one thing. It's the opening uh, part of the song, and it says, he knows my name. Well, uh -huh. And you know, right now, when we think about that, that just that alone should give you some joy. To knowing that God, look, he knows me personally. Yes. He knows my name personally. Yes. Even with all the people in this world, he knows my name. Yes. So if he knows my name and he cares so much for me, just like the song says, he loves me, the least I can do is acknowledge him yes. as my Lord and Savior. Yes. And I do that today. Yeah. And I do declare that I thank him for knowing who I am. Yeah. Not only does he know my name, he knows all about me. He knows what I'm thinking. He knows what's in my heart. He knows everything about me. And since he knows me, I better try to act right, I think. that's what I, I think that's what I need to do. Because if I don't act right, you know, he may disown me. I don't want to be disowned by him. I, I think it's an honor that he knows my name. I think it's a privilege that he knows my name. And then the song goes on to say, oh, how he walks with me. Oh, when I think about that, just think about it. With Jesus, we're never alone. No matter where we go, he's always with us. Isaiah 41 and 10 says, fear not. For I am with thee. So that confirmed the fact that she said, oh, how he walks with me. That means when I walk down in the valley in the shadow of death, he's with me there too. No matter where I go. When I'm going up and down the dangerous highway, he's with me. Because he walks with me. And I'm so glad that he walks with me. And I'm so glad I don't have to walk alone. I'm so glad he's with me. Even when I'm in the valley, he walks with me. When I'm on the mountaintop, he walks with me. It doesn't make any difference where I go. And that's why I got to remember, wherever I go, the Holy Spirit is with me. And I need to act like I know that he's walking with me everywhere I go. And it says, oh, how he talks with me. Oh, I'm so glad he talks with me. Because sometimes I'm lonely. And I need to hear a word. And I need to hear a message. And I'm so glad that the Lord talks with me. As we learn in Sunday school this morning, sometimes we just need to get in a quiet place and hear the voice of the Lord as he speaks to us. 1 Kings 19 and 12. It talks about how he speaks to us in a still, small voice. He doesn't have to shout. He doesn't have to say it out loud. And the thing about it is you got to be able to hear him when he talks to you. I'm so glad he talks to me because sometimes I be at a point in my life where I get at a crossroad. I don't know if I need to go left. I don't know if I need to go right. But the Lord will tell me, I need you to go right. Now, when the Lord talks to you, make sure you listen and do exactly what he says. I'm so glad that he talks to me. I'm so glad he talks to me in this still, small voice. And he doesn't have to exert a lot of energy when he talks to you. Because, see, if he was talking to you so loud, you might not even be able to hear what he's saying. Now, I know in the Old Testament, you know, they say, we want to hear from God. So Moses said, you sure you want to hear from God? So God spoke to him. And they had to come in. They couldn't stand it. His voice was so powerful. They said, don't let him talk to us no more. But today, he speaks to us in a still, small voice. Now, are we listening to the Lord when he speaks to us? Then it says, oh, how he tells me. That I am his own. Yes, <laughs> Aren't you glad to know that today? He tells me I'm his own. So that means he's, he says, I'm your shepherd and you are my sheep. And then the children say, "You are my." if you say I'm your shepherd and you're my sheep, why aren't you following me? 
<laughs> but see, I'm so glad that he says that I am his own. Yeah. Because see, I know my mother and my father, they like to call me their child. But I'm telling you what, instead of just being their child, I'm glad to know I'm a child of the king yeah. also. Yeah. And he claims me as his own. Yeah. Even in all my mess that I've done. <laughs> the mess that I sometimes think about doing. <laughs> Y'all might as well be honest up in this place. Uh, we ain't gonna play today. But all of that, he still tells me that I am his own. In John chapter 10, verse 11, he says, I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd giveth his life for his sheep. See, we are all his sheep. Well, if you're following him, if you're following him, you are his sheep. And I'm so glad he claimed, I need a ship. <laughs> I don't know about you, but sometimes I get somewhere. You know, they say sheep don't have good sense anyhow. Uh, a sheep will walk off a cliff and won't even think nothing about it. But I'm so glad I got a shepherd and he got a staff in his hand. And when he see me about to walk off a cliff, he reaches out and pulls me back. Because he loves me just that much. And he cares for me just that much. I'm glad I'm his own. I'm glad he claimed me. Sometimes, you know, it kind of feels like it's personal. Sometimes you feel like you're the only one that he's saying his own. But he got the whole world in his hand. But I'm so glad I'm included in the number. I'm so glad I ain't been kicked to the curb. And I'm so glad since he's my own, I ought to act like I know he's my own. I ought to act like I know he's a good shepherd. And I need to be the good sheep. Then it goes on to say, Oh, how he comforts me. All right, huh. That's good right there. Yeah, yeah. The Lord comforts me. Yeah, even when I'm going through pain, yeah. just like we heard in the Sunday school this morning. Yeah. He still comforts me yeah. when I'm going through. Yeah, yeah. When I'm going through pain, when I'm going through heartache, yeah. I know he is there to comfort me. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you look to your neighbor to comfort you. And they just can't do it. Sometimes husband look to their wife. Wife look to the husband for comfort. And sometimes they just can't give you what you need. As we learned this morning, sometimes people don't know what you're going through. But there is one who knows what you're going through. Oh, Jesus knows what you're going through. Believe me, he knows. That's why he made the Beatitudes. He knows what you're going through. And he knows you're going to need a word. And he knows that he has a word that will comfort you. I'm so glad that he comforts me. Yeah. Psalm 23 and 2 confirms that he comforts you. Because it declares, he making me to lie down in green pastures. Oh, that's comfortable now. Have you, have you ever seen a green uh, a yard that's got that nice, pretty green grass? And then you see another yard where they got grass here and there. A lot of dirt, a lot of dried up grass. But see, he making me lie down in the green pasture. And for a sheep, there ain't no more comfortable place than you can be. Than right there on that nice green grass. And he, look, he prepared it just for us. And he prepared it just for me. But he didn't stop there because in Psalm 23 and 4, he said, Thy rod and thy staff, they come for me. I'm so glad about that rod and that staff. Because it comforts me. Because like I said, sometimes I go places I don't need to go. Sometimes I'm walking ways I don't need to walk. But he'll take that rod, he'll take that stand, and he'll put me right back where I need to be. He'll take me out of harm's way. He'll take me out of danger. And you ain't going to feel comfortable if you're in danger now. But when the Lord takes you out of that danger, you start feeling comfortable again. Because ain't nobody feeling comfortable when they're in danger. So he comforts me with that rod yeah. and that staff, and he tells me where I need to go. Yeah. And now if he tell me where I need to go, I need to listen. Yeah. Because, see, he's trying to tell me, this is not good for you, so you need to do it my way. Yeah. And then he says this, she says this in the song. Oh, how he counsels me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad. You know, you can't take counsel from everybody. <laughs> you can't take counsel from the ungodly. So I'm so glad that he counsels me. And when he counsels me, I know that's some good counsel. Uh, because he knows everything that I need to know. He knows everything about me. He is a wonderful counselor. And that's proclaimed in Isaiah chapter 9 and 6. It says he is a wonderful counselor. You can't take counsel from just anybody. You know, you take counsel from somebody and it ain't the Lord. 
you are making a serious mistake because they're going to tell you what they would do. I'm not concerned about what they would do. I'm concerned about what the Lord wants me to do. That's what's more important to me. I'm not concerned about what you want me to do. I'm concerned about what the Lord wants me to do. And he will tell me what he wants me to do because he'll counsel me. And sometimes, you know how when you get in trouble sometimes, on a job when you get in trouble, they take you in and they counsel you. You know, when you get in trouble with the Lord, he'll counsel you too. And they say, uh, uh, first of all, you got to go to him in a, a humble spirit and say, Lord, I messed up again. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. And then he'll start giving you some counsel. He said, I forgive you. Matter of fact, I cast it into the sea of forgiveness. I won't even remember it against you no more. But let me tell you something, son. When you leave here, do it no more. Sin no more. That's good counseling right there. He's telling me don't do that anymore. But I'm so glad that he did give me the reassurance because that's what counseling does. It reassures you that he has everything taken care of. I'm so glad for the wonderful counsel, aren't you? But we tell people all the time, especially our children, do not take counsel from the ungodly because they're going to lead you astray. But I'm so glad the Lord has covered everything that we can get involved in. There ain't nothing we that we have done or that we are capable of doing that the Lord has already talked about it in the Word. That's good counsel right there. Amen. Now, now, now let me tell you something real good. This right here ought to make you shout right here. <laughs> he calls me friend. All right, <laughs> right. Whoa, 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 whoa. He calls me friend. Yeah. Even with all my mess, he still calls me friend. He didn't just call me anybody. He called me his friend. John chapter 15 and 15 says this. I no longer call you servant, <laughs> but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my father, I have made known unto you. Now, ain't that a friend? Oh, my goodness. What a friend we have in Jesus. He told us everything that we need to know. There was some mystery that was in the word that we didn't even know about. But because we were his friend, he told us all about it. He told us about the ending right at the beginning. And he didn't keep anything from us. He said, you're better than a servant. Yeah, you should be a servant. But know this, you are also my friend. Wow. What a friend to have. What a friend we have. All our grief, all our sorrows, he bears them all. He stick to us closer than a brother. So when you got a friend like that, and see, not, not only are we trying to make him our friend, but he already told us we are his friend. So, you know, we got to make some friends too. We, we ought to show ourselves friendly sometimes too. Because he didn't have to make us his friend. But I'm so glad he did. He accepted us as a friend. And then because of that, he confides in us. And he shares mysteries with us, things that we, we didn't even know about. And he's revealing things to us every day. Because he's, he says we're his friend. I'm so glad he calls me friend. And then she goes on to say, no fire can burn me. Oh, no fire can burn me. That means it don't make no difference what it is. It can't harm me. No fire can burn me. Oh, y'all know what happened in Daniel. 3 and 27. Them three Hebrew boys. Yeah, because they say, oh, you want to worship somebody other than God. We're going to throw you in the fiery furnace. But what happened when they threw them in? They went in the fiery furnace. They was walking around down there. Their clothes didn't get burned. Their body didn't get burned. And then when they looked in the furnace, they saw somebody else in there with them. That was our friend that was in there with them. And the fire didn't even burn them. It says, and the kings, and that scripture says, and the king's counselors, being gathered together, saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power. The fire had no power. No fire can burn me. <laughs> so the fire had no power. Nor was a hair of their head sin. Not one hair was burned on their head. Neither were the coats changed. Nor the smell of fire had passed on them. How can you go in a fire? Don't even smell like smoke when you come out. That's why I know no fire can burn me. I'm so glad that the Lord has power over the fire too. Because y'all know we've been in some fires in our life. 
Uh, we, we, we thought we were going to be totally consumed by the fire. But the Lord didn't let the fire burn us in us. He brought us out of the fire. And we came out victorious. And we give him praise and glory for it. Just like the three Hebrews. We got to be faithful in the Lord. Because you know sometimes when they turn up the heat. Uh, when they turn the heat up a little bit. You know you got to. You really know who's who then. Uh, because when they turn the heat up on the saints. Sometimes they might drift to the left. Or they might drift to the right. But since I know no fire can burn me. I might as well just say I'm going to do it the way the Lord wants. I ain't even worried. If he did it for the three Hebrew boys, I know he can do it for me. Uh, and you better know he can do it for you. Uh, he controls the fire. He controls everything. That's good. Then the song goes on to say, no battle can turn me. <laughs> you ever had some battles in your life? <laughs> Yeah, you know, when the battle comes up, a lot of people, when a battle comes up, they ready to throw in the towel. As a matter of fact, they have this thing now where, you know, when someone gets ready to surrender, they got the white flag. They can wave the white flag. It's getting too hot now. Uh-huh. And they wave that flag and say, this is too much for me. But let me tell you something, say, the song said, no battle can turn me. I'm going on with Jesus just the same. Devil, shoot your best shot. You can see in your fiery darts all you want to, but I serve a God that has power even over you. And you can't do that. Y'all remember, Job, how the devil tried to, he said, do whatever you want, but you, look, I'm going to give you some guidelines now. The Lord said, you can't take his life. You can do everything else, but you, look, the Lord has the devil under control. That means you ain't got to worry about no battle. Don't let no battle turn you. Y'all remember what happened at Jericho? Don't let no battle turn you. Second Chronicles 20 and 15 says this. Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours. It's God. It's God. Not only will the battle not turn me, I ain't even got to fight the battle. Fight. Only thing I gotta do is say, God, you know all about it. Because the battle ain't even mine. I know the enemy's coming against me, but it ain't my battle. You know why? Because I belong to the Lord. And as long as I belong to the Lord, I'm gonna step back and I'm gonna let him fight my battle. And I guarantee you, if you let the Lord fight your battle, all victory is yours. Now, don't you try to intervene now. If you want to let them do it, get out of the way and let them do it. It don't make no difference what the battle is. It could be sickness. It could be disease. It could be whatever it is. I just say, Lord, you got this. I can't do nothing with it. I ain't going to let it turn me. It ain't going to turn me because God got it. And God ain't going to let me turn it. He ain't going to let me turn He got me. I'm so glad he got me. And since I have uh, I have God fighting all my battles, uh, there's no way I'm going to be turned by any of those battles. The world will try to mess you up. Uh -huh, they'll do things that try to trip you up. And you're going to try to fight it? No, no, don't fight it. Let the Lord do it. Let the Lord do it. He knows everything. She goes on to say, no mountain can stop me. <laughs> oh, it don't make the look, Lord, you don't have to move my mountain. <laughs> but give me the strength to climb. Y'all remember that song, don't you? Yeah, ain't no no mountain gonna stop me. I know when you look at it, it look like, oh, oh, that's a barrier I can't get over. But when you got God on your side, you ain't this is what he said in Matthew 17 and 20. Glory. You shall say unto this mountain. <laughs> Get with your mouth now. Remove hence to yonder. And it shall remove. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. Now don't you test that now. Because you know, we sometimes like to test God. We'll see a mountain say, I want to see if I can really move that mountain. Mountain, be it removed over yonder. Then when it starts moving, oh no, 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 no. I didn't, I didn't mean that. Don't test God like that. But he talking about these mountains in your life. <laughs> he don't, look, you just tell that mountain. Look, stop telling your mountains, or telling people about your mountain. Tell your mountain about your God. Yeah, yeah, tell that mountain. Uh, look, I serve a God that tells me I got the power to tell you to move. Now, now let me 
me tell you what I need. Move mountain. Move mountain. Get on out of my way. Move mountain and get on out of my way. Uh -huh. When you tell them that, it can't stay. It can't stay. It's got to go. You can just speak a thing. You got to believe it when you speak it, though. And don't you be trying to do nothing on your own. Just speak to that mountain. The Lord said that's all you got to do is speak to that mountain. That mountain in your life, just speak to it. And speak to You see what it said? We walk by faith and not by sight. That means you can speak a thing. And the Lord will do it. And no battle is going to turn. No mountain is going to stop me. Ain't no mountain big enough to stop me. Because I serve a God that's bigger than any mountain. He made the mountain. And then he gave me the power to speak it and then move. Oh, oh, I ain't worried about no mountain in my life. It ain't going to stop me. No giant can defeat me. Uh-oh. You ever have giants come in your life? You know how people are sometimes. They seem like a giant in your life, and you feel like there ain't no way I'm going to defeat them. That's what, uh, you know, they try to think, say that thing about David, too. Uh, look, Goliath looked at him and said, you got to be kidding me. You? Going to beat me. <laughs> yeah, right. And he said, yep, yep. And the reason David was able to say that, because he know he wasn't by himself. <laughs> yeah, he had a slingshot and some smooth stone. But what Goliath couldn't see was the God that was behind him. He couldn't see that. So he thought it was just that little ruddy one coming with a slingshot and some smooth stone. But look, look, look. This is what David did. He took a stone out put it in that sling and sling it. <laughs> and Goliath the giant of the Philistine and the stone sank in his forehead and he slew him. He slew him. You know, and it ain't that his aim was that good. <laughs> it was God controlling the stone. Yeah, the only thing you gotta do is say, Lord, this is your battle. You see that giant right there? You defeat that giant or show me how I can defeat giant. If you want me to use a smooth stone, I'll use a smooth stone. But I tell you, the Lord wants you to use today. He wants you to use his word. You don't need no gun. You don't need no slingshot. You don't need nothing but the word of God. And when you use the word of God, as a giant <laughs> do come. But the bigger they are, <laughs> the harder they fall. Uh -uh. Ain't no giant gonna defeat me because I serve the, serve the Lord. The same God will slay our giants too. You know we got some giants in our life. Yeah, we got giants. They rise up every now and then. Some of them rise up a lot. But one thing about it is God gives us the power to slay that giant and to knock him down. I know y'all ain't going to believe this, but I'm almost finished. Uh -huh. See, because, see, at the end of the song, uh -huh. it states this. Why am I able to endure all this? Uh -huh. yeah. how, why, why is all this possible? How can I, how do I, how am I able to do all of these things? How am I able to get over this? How am I able to sling and uh, slay uh, my giants? How, how? He said, because. He holds my hand. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. He holds my hand. That's why. He holds my hand and I'm never alone. Isaiah 41 and 10 says, Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. He holds my hand. So that means when I feel like I'm about to fall, he reaches down. And, and remember, he reaching down, but you need to reach up too. Uh -huh. You need to reach up too. So you need to have enough faith to reach up and know even when you can't see his hand because you know they used to have those things with people in the quicksand, right? And the only thing you can see is their hand coming up out of the quicksand. But even when you can't see it, you reach up and know for sure he is there to uphold you by his right hand. I'm so glad today that he holds my hand. The Lord holds my hand. That means I'm never alone. I never have to worry. Even when I can't see my way, he'll show me the way because he's upholding me with his right hand. I can't do nothing on my own. 
I don't even have enough strength to do it. But I'm so glad that he holds me in his hand and he holds my hand. Not only does he hold me, there are some say he got the whole world in his hand. But see, these things we can take personal. Because these things he's talking about each and every one of us yes, who serve him, who worship him, who knows who he is. And, and look, he knows your name. You ain't got to worry about it. You don't have to even wonder, is he going to be there for me? Yes, he is. Because he knows you and he knows your name. And he'll call you by name. Sometimes when you're walking in places you don't need to call, he'll call you. You know, I know he called me a whole bunch of times. Daryl. Okay. 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 <laughs> Even when I didn't know him, uh -huh. he, he was calling me. Right. When I when I was going out to the club, he yeah, was calling right. me, Daryl. Okay. Who was that? Uh -huh. You looking around? Who called me? Uh -huh. And it was him calling me all along, and I didn't know he was calling me. And he was calling me, telling me, "You don't need to be out here doing this. Uh -huh. You don't need to be. Your wife sitting at the house, and you out here acting crazy. Uh -huh. You don't need to be doing none of that." So he'll keep calling you now. And if you keep rejecting him, you'll keep standing out there doing stuff. You, you know, there's some people that's been called. He done brought some people out of some mess. And you know what they've done? They went right back out there in the mess. Yeah, they done went right back out there. Now they're doing the, the same thing they used to do. But I'm so glad. I'm, I said I'm glad that he walks with me. And he talks with me. And he tells me that I am his own. I'm so glad about that thing. I'm so glad that he holds me in his hand. And I'm so glad that he won't never, never, ever let me fall. Even when I feel like I'm falling, only thing I got to do is reach up. Y'all Yo, need to reach up now and reach up and grab the hand of the Lord. Reach up if you need a blessing. He'll be right there. Oh, he'll never leave you nor will he forsake you. Just reach up to God right now. Oh, the only thing you got to know, he knows who you are. So when you say, Lord, it's me again, standing in the need of prayer, the Lord will be right there and he will reach down and uphold you with his right hand. He knew my name. Yes, he knows. You know, when he went to the cross, he knew my name. See, he went to the cross. When he went to the cross, he said, that Daryl going to be a sinner. He ain't even born yet, and I already know what he going to do. Yeah. And look, he was telling the truth, too. He know what he was talking about, too. Because I thought, I, look, I tried. My wife said something about that in Sunday school this morning. I, I, you know, I thought I'm big. Man, I'm big now. I'm grown. I can do whatever I want to do. Yeah, I, I can treat people the way I want to treat them. Uh -huh. But one thing about it, the Lord already knew. And he said, I know that one right there going to need me. So he said, I got to do something. Because, you know, God, was, you know, he repented. He made us anyway. And I know y'all tired of me hearing you say it, but I'm going to say it again. Man born of a woman of a few days full of trouble. Still ain't changed. Still full of trouble. God knew that. And he knew that I got to do something because God said, I repent. I made them. They full of sin. Gave them everything that they want. Adam and Eve had it all. They went to God, had everything they need. But it just won't good enough. Ain't that like people today? No matter what God does for us, it ain't good enough. We want more. And we want more. What you need more of, you need to be more and more and more like Jesus. How about that? Can you be more and more like him? Yeah, that's what we need. That's the only more we need. We need more and more like Jesus. But yeah, he's, he's, he thought about us and, and he took all of that suffering for us. He stood trial. He was not even guilty, but he stood trial anyway. He let them accuse him of this and accuse him of that. And you know what? He didn't even say a mumbling word. He didn't say, you are wrong, you are a liar, I didn't do it. He didn't have to say any of that. You know why? Because he was thinking about us. He wasn't thinking about himself. He was thinking about us. And he already knew what he had to do. So he went on through the trial, let them accuse them, and then they didn't, you know, they couldn't even do nothing with them. They had to go to Pilate and say, Pilate, look, we need you to crucify. And Pilate said, what has he done? What has he done that's so bad that y'all want? And I tell you what, let me give y'all a let me give y'all a good deal. Uh, you see that that character over there named Barabbas? 
I'm going to let y'all, if y'all want me to now, I can release him or I can release your king. Which one you want me to release? Now, you know, common sense say he released the king. No, give us Barabbas. That's how bad they wanted him to. They were tired of him telling them about themselves. You know, some of us today, some people today don't like the Lord telling them about themselves. They don't like preachers telling them about themselves. They don't like pastors telling them about themselves. But one thing about it is, since he knows my name, tell me everything I need to know. Don't, don't sugarcoat it with me. Tell me so I know what's going on. So they believe, release Barabbas and say, crucify him. And they had their mind made up. So they sent him on down there to Calvary. And then they laid that cross on the ground. They laid him on it, put nails in his hand, put nails in his feet. Then they raised that cross up. And when they raised it up, people were looking at him. Some of them were looking at him in disgust. Some of them were looking at him like wagging their heads and saying, mm -hmm. he said he was the son of God, but look at him now. They didn't know he was still the son of God. He's still the king of kings. Still the Lord, Lord. Matter of fact, Pilate even knew. He put a sign over and said, he the king of the Jews. And the Jews should have been praising God right then to know that he is their king. That's why we ought to praise him, Lord. He is our king. He's the king over every king, and he's the Lord over every Lord. But they had him on that cross, and then he, as he uh, said to his father, said, Father, why have you forsaken me? And then he gave up the ghost. Yes. And then Joseph came and took him and said, let me have his body. Yes. And he put him in that bar or two. Yes. Yes. And yes. I don't know how Joseph knew this, but he knew he wasn't going to be there long because that tomb was prepared for Joseph. Yes. He said, but you can borrow it, Lord. Because okay. I know you ain't going to need it, Lord. Okay. He already told him what was going to happen in three days. He said, you can tear this temple down, but in three days it shall be rebuilt. So what happened on the third day? Y'all know what happened on the third day. He got up. He got up out of that tomb. Yes, he did. He got up out of that tomb. And when he got up, he got up with all power in his hand. All, all power. That means he got the power to move the mountain, to get us through the battle. He got all power in his hand. Then he said, you know what? The things I've done, you can do even greater. That's what, That's what he said. And if he said it, Lord knows I believe it. <laughs> so that means if my wife feels sick in the name of Jesus, I know I can lay hands on her and she will recover. I know there's probably somebody that you love right now who's walking around in sin. And you don't seem like they're going to ever come out. But I tell you today, in the name of Jesus, you can lay hands on them and they will be delivered. Because the Lord say you can do it. And I look, he knows your name. So since he knows your name, if he tells you to do it, you need to do it. You need to know that you can do it. Because see, his feet, look, he, the blood he shed ain't going to never lose his power no how. So you can do whatever the Lord says. But I'm so glad that he got up on that third day. And I'm glad he sits on the right hand of the Father right now, making intercessions for us all. But the thing that I'm so happy about today, church, is this. He knows my name. 